my New Year's resolutions. Eat better. Save more. Finally get organized. Shit post. Spend more time with the family. Welcome to the anomaly. The contradistinct, uncensored, unmonetizable, and deemed unwatchable by the mainstream masses. We are the ones they cannot control and attempt to hold back. But together, we form revolution. The Ramborgia. Welcome to John Rambo Presents the Show. Stay ballsy. Don't take any shit from anyone. So let us begin today's program with yet another bulletin from the esteemed senator, Terrence P. Murphy. You down with TPM? Of course. Yeah. We've heard from him many times before on the show. He once gave us some helpful tips on water safety. Mm-hmm. How not to drown in a pool, OJ. We did not drown that year. No, no, we're, we didn't drown the year after that either. He saved, he saved our lives. And uh, there's also another letter of his I read that I cannot remember what it was. Do you remember this? There was another one. I don't know what it was about. Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Okay, well, it's out there somewhere, one of these episodes along the way. Scavenger hunt time. Okay. Yeah, you can look for it. You will, you will receive no prize. Just a lot of wasted time. Uh, but this new one came in the mail. Came uh, by email, actually, because I'm signed up. Man. I'm on the newsletter. You're saving some trees. I'm on top of this, okay? It arrived on January 4th of 2018. It's 2018 now. Did you know this, OJ? I had my suspicions. Do you know what 2018 is the year of? Like the animal? Uh, Let me think. There's 12 of them. It's not divisible that? by 12. Is that I know when the year of that? the... It's it's the zodiac, right? Is, the is Chinese the zodiac? zodiac, the really? Chinese zodiac, the Chinese zodiac, though. I think. Oh, I see. There's different races. Of well, the, like the European zodiac is like the like Scorpio and Virgo and all that jazz. So why do we hear about this one, the Chinese one? Why is that better? Is that racist? I I mean, if I'm wrong, then maybe it is. It but... is the year of the dog, OJ. Our are you excited for the year of the dog? Puppy time. I do like dogs, dogs very much. Does the, does the dog get something out of this? You know, it, that makes me wonder, is there a specific dog that all that this is talking treat. about? Or is it's it just all dog dogs. in general? The nation of dogs. One nation under dog? Yes. Are you excited about 2018? That's a new year. Did you know that? Oh, we already asked you, did you know? I'm asking you twice <laughs> just to make sure your answers are consistent with each other. So make sure you're not lying. I had my suspicions <laughs> yes. that it was 2018. And I don't know. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I think that we could do some cool stuff in 2018. And like, I don't know. <sighs> have you forgotten to put I, the eight instead of the seven multiple times? Have you? Broken yeah, those? I have. You've done it on, on important documents, checks. <laughs> that you had to rip up. Set them, rip up, dude. Set them on fire, and then you have to eat the ashes. That's your punishment. Important docs. Mm-hmm. You've messed them up. Very do much. Some, uh, do you think like anyone out there got fired? Like, there's a very important document. <laughs> there's got to be at least one guy out there, right? Yeah. You got to imagine it's a big world out there. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some dude and he gets in trouble like every year, so he just takes January as like vacation month and just spends the entire time <laughs> practicing writing the year. Just practicing it out. Just think about it. Once, once you know, you get used to writing the year, sooner or later, you're going to have to switch it over again. That'd be like an SNL skit. I could see that. Chris Kattan's in it. <laughs> Aw. It's like an early back. 2000s <laughs> SNL sketch you just, you just came up with right there. Very good. I, I'd watch it. <laughs> so there you go, man. For everyone listening, it's an eight now instead of seven. It is. If we're all on the same page, we can move on. Mm-hmm. Are you looking forward to 2018? Um, we'll see. I, I mean, it's a new thing. It's a new uh, friend. You know what I mean? I'm not ready yeah, to just jump in. So you're like, like two dogs sniffing around each other at first? It is the year of the dog. Uh-huh. 
So 2018 is like a new, it's a dog that I just met. He's out in the neighborhood alone, wandering around. I don't know if he just belongs to somebody. He's got no collar on. But I may, you know, eventually go over there and pet him and see what he what he gives me back. You know Hopefully I mean? not rabies. But you might. Some years you do get rabies. You do get rabies. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> this might be a rabies year for me. I don't know. We can only hope that it is not. Of course, of course. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. You know. Of course, John. I don't I want you to get rabies. Um, so anyway, let's get back on track here. I received an email from the great senator. Oh, yeah. TPM. It was entitled. This is the title of the email. <laughs> Winter storm alert. State of emergency declared. Very frightening to see something like that. Yeah. From the senator. The state senator state of emergency. He starts this off. Dear neighbor. Calls me neighbor. I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> He's your state senator. You should live relatively close to you, right? He's out there somewhere, yeah. Well, if, if he's for the state senate, then yeah. To all of his neighbors. This is the first thing. This is the first sentence, John. <laughs> <laughs> the bomb cyclone is upon us. <laughs> Dude, you just got to parry that and go straight into a super. The bomb cyclone is upon us. Yes, it sounds like some sort of a Street Fighter maneuver. Um, and there's like a thing going on at this time period. I guess was that locally or is that I don't know if that was nationally or internationally. Some people are like, "What's going on here?" But it was basically what this is like certain type of uh, cold front or something, and they called it this. Yeah, it's some sort of weird thing that gets the air spinning really fast. I guess like not quite a hurricane. It's not a tornado, but there's I don't get it. Did they just make this thing. up recently? Did, I don't know. I've this never heard the term before. But what's weird about this message, like, he doesn't go into any other details. He just says, he, like, he doesn't say the bomb slow clone, like, it means this or that. He just says the bomb cyclone is upon us. I mean, okay, okay, it could, that, it could very well be so. So you think you'd have some sort of explanation in there for people that maybe aren't on, like, Twitter or, like, watching the Weather Channel 24-7, you know what I mean? Wait, there are people who don't watch the Weather Channel 24-7? <laughs> Dude, I yes, got it on they're... the background right now. It's anyone under under the age of sixty. Um. Oh. So yeah, the yeah bomb cyclone. You imagine like a, uh, I mean, with all this kind of nuclear talk out there, is this maybe a, a North Korean missile that was sent here? That's part up of in, the nuclear triad. It got caught up in a tornado, and now it's all kind of. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like Sharknado. Yeah, it's like Sharknado Four: The Bombing. The bomb cyclone. So uh, he goes. He, he goes on from there with no explanation of what Bob Cyclone is. Just uh, drops that on you. Oh, it, I see what you did. And there. And he puts upon us like it's Game of Thrones or something. Mm-hmm. Like he, like he's a Stark, right? Mm-hmm. The if, Bob Cyclone is coming. A few hours ago, Governor Cuomo declared a state of emergency for Westchester County. The situation is only supposed to get worse through the day for our entire region. Powers, of course. A great concern as the winds continue to pick up. I have been briefed by both NYSEG and Con Edison, who are the uh, electric companies in the area. There's two of them. They compete with each other. <laughs> He's been briefed by them. What do you think that was like? They gave him underwear. They go into a room. Do they have, like, uh, suits on? They have a well, briefcase? It's... Well, obviously, if there's a brief... And then uh, they pull out, like, they open the briefcase, they pull out uh, a piece of paper. It's just a Bob Cyclone. document. <laughs> I don't even tell him what it is. That's why he didn't tell us. Bob Cyclone and Bold. Yeah, he, he actually never learned what it was. So he just, <laughs> he's, he's like, all right, but yeah, I'll tell them. I, I don't know. I don't quite understand what you guys are telling me, but I'm going to tell the people, my neighbors. They have to know that the Bomb Cyclone is, no, the Bomb Cyclone is upon us. <laughs> yes. Both utility companies have extra staff on hand to address any power outages. I will remain in contact with both companies and our partners in government to help address any issues that may arise. I mean, what sort of issues would arise from a bomb cyclone? We don't know what it is. (laughs) 
To report a power outage, please call the following numbers. NYSEG, 1-800-572-1131. Con Edison, 1-800-752-6633. I didn't need to read the numbers, but I want to make sure you know people know this is a legit thing I'm reading. You know, I just did realize, though, Bomb Cyclone sounds like a jo- like a, a special move for Relento. Well, Zangief is the Red Cyclone. Red Cyclone, yeah. Um, I don't know. Ooh, so it's a bomb with a rush? Okay, sorry, you read the phone numbers. Go on. If you do not need to go outside, please stay home. Who needs to go outside? I mean, really. Mm. If you don't need to go outside, please stay home. Snowplow people. That's my advice. That's his advice there. Okay. We must keep our roads clear for highway departments, utility crews, and first responders. I will continue to provide more updates throughout the day. I must tell you, OJ, and for the public listening, I did not receive any further updates. I was just about to ask. (laughs) I was looking for them. I didn't know what to do. How long should I stay home for? Is the bomb so close? Never left. Yes, I've been uh, shacked up here for uh, several weeks. And here we go. He goes on to say, and remember, you can always call my office if you have an issue. All the best. And I should have called him. We will have him on the show one day. Dr. Terrence P. Murphy, New York State Senator, 40th Senate District, 914-962-2624. And I, He's a doctor. Yes, we learned this last time, but he, he slips that in at the end of his uh, messages that he's also a doctor <laughs> and a doctor senator. It could be like a Netflix, a new Netflix series someday. Doctor Senator. Yeah. He's an amazing oh, man. No. <laughs> I could just picture like a f- uh, like what sort of scenarios would you have to solve? Like I'm trying to come up with a really witty joke and I'm failing. This is bothering me. Well, someone in the Senate gets you know, falls ill on the floor and he has to, you know, bring them back. That's one scenario. Oh, or he like he's caught between like he's got a surgery to perform, but there's an oh, important vote. What do I do? And he has and he's the deciding vote and he doesn't know what to do. And then he's able to make it the last second. Mm-hmm. It all works out. He plays yeah, the but the question song. is which does he try first? <laughs> also he's is he probably a lawyer doctor then? Like PhD. He's just an amazing man. Okay. Yeah. You now become senator of the fourth Senate district for nothing. No, sir. You, you, that's. He was hey, briefed by Con Edison. Briefed. I'm not arguing with you. Honestly, if you can get enough people to agree that you're the person they want to do things, yeah. that's impressive. Yes, controlling others. So, uh, OJ, how did you deal with the Bob Cyclone? Can we explain what, what was going on here? Basically, it was a, a period of uh, two weeks that was very cold. Yeah, and then didn't we get like the ton of snow? And we did get snow as well. Yeah, I guess it's this specific day uh, that I got this message yeah. from him. That was the snow day. <laughs> which was cool. Honestly, I had to stay home and got paid for it. Honestly, I kind of forgot it happened. Yes. Like, I forgot it happened until you reminded me just Life now. Life moves quickly for OJ. <laughs> so have time to think about the past. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of time to think about the past. I call Although it regret. you are doomed I mean, to repeat yeah. the mistakes of the past because you don't think about the past. <laughs> You are free yeah, of, its, of its weight and burden. Just don't think about it too much. <laughs> Proper dosages of past. So basically it was like a two-week period where it was just like very cold. So usually, I mean, what's the te- typical temperature? Uh, like 35 this time of year? Yeah, I think so. Fahrenheit, gone, my friends. Yeah, and I think it averaged like, it was like in zero, the teens or 20s or negative, something stupidly low. Negative numbers. Yeah, it's actually supposed to get super cold this weekend too. The return of the bomb cycle. Yeah, and I'm going camping. <laughs> I'm going to have to call the senator and say, my, my pal OJ is going camping. How do you feel about this, Dr. Senator? <laughs> if he told I think you, I might need the doctor part more than the senator part after this. If he told you no, would you still do it? Probably. Wow. Don't care what he has to say. Um, so you, uh, you enjoy the winter months. Yeah. How did you mm-hmm. feel during this cold period? We were, were fine with this or what? I was gr- it was great. Oh I mean, I like being able to go. The only thing I didn't like was my electric bill because yeah. I have electric heating. Right. But like, I love going outside when it's nice and cold and crisp. You can see your breath in the air. Yeah. Like, I don't like freezing rain, but if we do at some point get like enough freezing rain where it just kind of coats the trees, this <laughs> shining, like sparkling. Oh, my God. Coating, 
That's so pretty. It's like sexual for you, the way you would describe it. For, <laughs> for your arousing. That's, that's, maybe, that's it was a, maybe just hearing you to talk about it was arousing for me, maybe. That, that was going on. I don't... I, I think the bomb cyclone right. is something else entirely now. Terrence P. Murphy wouldn't agree with this. Um, <laughs> see, uh, you want to give me the 30s, uh, the 20s, well, 20s, um, you want to give me 30s and 40s this time of year, it's fine. That was a little extreme. It was a little I, rough, I, for, man. Like, at least let it be below freezing. It's the winter for crying out loud. It's a little Four? much when it's uh, the zeros, okay? Uh, it's a little bit. Nah, dude. Um, let it be below freezing, and, and they'll stop complaining. Well, people just die of, of uh, freezing to death. I mean, I really shouldn't talk, considering I'm probably going to freeze this weekend. But <laughs> right now, sitting literally underneath a blanket in my warm home, like, yeah, let it be cold. Let it be below <laughs> freezing. Her burr, burr, burr. Yeah. So here's my issue with the winter. It really has nothing to do with the temperature. Because, I mean, what, I don't know. A lot of people complain about it. That's actually one of the things I don't like about it. Um, but it's like, just put a coat on and put on two coats if it's extra cold. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and it's not like most of these people like complain all the time. It's not like they actually do anything outside anyway. They usually go from their heated homes to their cars and then go and get like their... 10 awkward minutes till it warms up. Exactly. So a lot of people complain. That's one of the things I don't like. Um, and one thing I noticed is like everyone's always sick. <laughs> do you notice this as well? Yeah. I'd say more than the summer. Like people are just constantly sneezing, ca- like coughs. Just dying out there. I saw some dude walking through the office, just like just cough, like he's walking towards the door, like doesn't even raise his hands. I'm like, I'm just gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say it, it snuck up on him, like he's just walking by. And <coughs> <laughs> like I'm like that poor man. First he sounds sick. Second of all, oh gosh, he just coughed right in the hallway. I'm gonna turn around and go the other way. I should. Yeah, it's really just like don't care, man. Like restaurants, like people just coughing like crazy. Dude, I went to a it's restaurant like, in Tokyo. Home. Maybe where my maybe server stay. was yeah. sick. I mean, granted, they wore a, like a, a surgeon's mask. Yeah, but I can hear them coughing. Well, I'm that like, can just uh, accept because it's like your job. Maybe they need the money. Yeah, but if you're like just a, like you're going to Cheesecake Factory and you have like the flu, and you're serious, oh. seriously like this happened, and like, why would you come? <laughs> like there was someone sitting near you. Some someone near. I don't. I don't want to become like that. You know, complaining person. Yeah. But I, okay. Yeah. I did notice yeah. this. I did notice this happen. And just like a terrible, not like a, a little cough. Like I'm talking like a terrible cough. Or I wanted to like put a blanket around this guy and like bring him <laughs> to the hospital. Like, oh, he, dude, it was like a terrible, uh, like scary cough this man had, and he couldn't stop. No, that's awful. No, dude. Why did you come man? here to this restaurant? You gotta feel better. You gotta Children. relax. You don't go out. Yeah. You don't need. You don't need that. You're patient you know, zero, buddy. Factory burrito, the factory burger. Everything's a factory. To be fair, right the there. factory burrito is like five pounds. Yeah, but it's like fourteen. But it's not healing. Yeah, but here's the thing, dude. <laughs> it's, not, it's not healing. Yeah, it's not a healing burrito. It's not like Robitussin in the middle of it. Okay, I mean, you know, that yes. would be so funny. You could actually fit an entire unopened package, like the square package of Robitussin, inside that burrito. You it's wouldn't good. even notice it till you bit it. So what uh, what is the, what are you trying to tell me here? Go ahead. Oh, so yeah, a friend of mine, nice guy, but my gosh, like he was dead set on going with us to this restaurant, and he's like, "No, I'm gonna come with you," but we're all like, "You're sick." He's like, "I know, I'm gonna come anyway," and he gets in the car. We all carpool together, and he says, "By the way, if any of you guys get sick, it's your fault." Like what? It's not our fault that. I mean. The only thing we could have done is, is basically said, no, we don't want you, which is really mean to do to somebody, especially when they're sick. But I think if you're sick, you shouldn't – you should stay home. Don't come into the office if you if you can avoid it. If you have to come into the office, take a page out of like Japan or maybe some other Asian countries' books and wear like a surgeon's mask. Even if it doesn't do anything, it lets people know no, to stay back. I don't think you if you wore a surgeon's mask here. Oh, dude. Dude, if you want to – People like really call, people like call the cops <laughs> – the call oh, terrorist hotlines if you do that. Yeah, they sell co- all black ones, so it looks like like a ninja mask. Well, don't do that. That <laughs> it's where the normal ones. Okay, that'll keep people away from you right quick. I hope these poor manners do not influence your actions in the future, OJ. I hope you do not become corrupted by these derelicts that you <laughs> associate with. Oh man, I, I try not to get. I'm, dude, I'm paranoid about this. I feel re- like. 
I I'm feel bad. I, I can see like you, right, you got to go to, I don't know. Even like you're going to the movie. Uh, well, the movies is bad too. I don't know. Where could you? I, I don't Where know. could you take a sick person? I'm not sure bad because it's yeah. You know, you, people are trying to eat. So have, yeah, appetizing and you. I don't know. Food. All right, whatever. So, like... all right. <laughs> We're becoming very impassioned here. Um, no, I just did a really jerk move once when I noticed a friend oh, of mine God. was sick, and I just didn't like. I'm trying to remember what it was. I like was it? I didn't want him to open my wa- open my water bottle for me that? or something. I just no. I just realized I'm being such an a hole. Like I just don't want to touch him or his my water bottle or anything like i want him to be in another bubble in the car you couldn't even look at really him. bad you couldn't even I make eye contact with him. you might catch yeah. something yeah i apologize to him like i'm sorry dude i got really paranoid i didn't mean to but wow yeah dude. that was me oj I... no it wasn't, <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> but it just seems like in, this, in the winter everyone's always sick compared to other seasons i don't know why are people just like leaving their windows open at night they don't know how to they don't realize they're open they say it's they, because people stay closer together and don't go outside as much. Okay, they're they're indoors more. Yeah, but I never go outside, so I don't understand. I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like people don't really go outside much in general. <laughs> yeah, especially here. I guess it's possible. I don't know. Man. I mean, now that Nintendo Switch exists, people go outside more because you don't have to be. I'm kidding, but like, I. I still don't see the big difference. Like what I should do is keep track of like people. They should do a study where they keep track of people in the summer and the winter, like give them a little thing that, that can tell when they're inside or outside. I think it has to do with the heat. Like the air quality is bad. Maybe, <sighs> maybe. Uh, uh, well, f- hilariously enough, I've checked the weather and it'd say air quality alert, blah, 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 but only in the summer. That's true, apparently yeah. there's like ozone or whatever uh, floating around. That is true. I also I dislike the the heat of the electric heat. I have like um, the baseboard yeah. heaters, and uh, it's just very annoying. It's loud. Like I wake clack, up in clack, the night. Clack. I wake up in the night. It's like you think there's like a, a freaking like Velociraptor in the room, like like trying to get bust through the wall. To be fair, that was Brachiosaur. And uh, <laughs> oh, is that right? They didn't do it properly. No, I'm just messing with you. Good job, Spielberg. You lied to me. <laughs> Um, yeah, but just, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. And I feel like I hate the heat, the way it feels. Uh, yeah, it's just gross. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it sm- sometimes it smells like ozone here, because I think that the electric heat sometimes, like, generates ozone or something. Ozone? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's the thing. It creates an ozone <laughs> around your, around your No, head. like, it's a gas, man. It's like O3, I think. Huh. I don't know. I could be hallucinating, but it, yeah, the, it's like the <laughs> smell you get during a lightning storm. Okay. Be careful with that. There might be some other type of gas. Let you matches uh, or something. I don't know. It's could be. Know. And then my other point, just the level of amount of clothing. You have to have washing yeah. the clothing. Just to, I keep, mean, just to keep it all clean. What? No, for the summer. Summer, you have, like, far less clothing. Well, you wear the same me? thing all year. I wear the same thing all year, except in the summer, I'm more likely to need to change a t-shirt because I'm Grody McGroderstan. I don't know what that was. All right. Well, there you go. But I do have my own story about the Bob Cyclovers. We're not done with this yet. No, of course not. This is the whole show. <laughs> Bob Cyclovers. <laughs> Cycl- <laughs> Raising a storm! I'm just trying to lose the whole audience. I'm just trying... <laughs> See if we could do it. Um, so my last, I have a story about the Bob. So I was going. This was just the setup, okay. I was going. I was heading in this direction with this whole thing, all right. So it's been well documented throughout the course of this program. I have a bad car. I've had some bad cars. You know, cars of personality, man. I could uh, at this point, I could pretty much get a new car whenever I want. But cool. I choose not to. It's very also expensive. Cool. Very true. I hate cars. I don't want to go to the place and look at the car. This is the door. It opens. <laughs> Unless it's Night Rider, dude. Why don't you Unless sit in the seat? It's so good. You'll love the seat. The seat will love you back. This car <laughs> drives when you hit the gas. It has brakes that are good. <laughs> And a windshield that's amazing. 
Look at the quality of glass. How vibrant the color. Those are the things people say. The vibrancy of the colors when you drive looking through this glass. <laughs> the only vibrancy I want to see are the taillights of the guy you stopped in the middle of the road ahead of me. Yeah. How about I don't care. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, I could get a car, but uh, my car, it's more of an adventure to have these, these crazy cars, man. So I have a uh, 2006 Ford Focus. And the whole thing's just like rusting out. It's like falling apart piece by piece. Mm. Um, so I had an issue where the whole like exhaust system um, like collapsed underneath the uh, underneath the car. Collapsed, collapsed, like it fell down. Yeah, like it all fell down. It's on like a harness, and the whole thing just rusted out and just collapsed. Cool. And uh, to this one place, and they're like, "Well, we'll have to get a whole new harness and a whole new piece." But I found this wonderful man. He's not my mechanic. I have a mechanic now. He's my mechanic. Mm. I text with him. <laughs> He's a wonderful, wonderful person. You whisper sweet nothing sometimes, into the carburetor. Sometimes the Lord sends you angels, OJ. You got to let them work. Let them do the work. <laughs> OJ is one of my angels. Aw. <laughs> That's sweet. So, uh... So this, basically, I found this guy who was like, "Oh, I'll just, um, I'll just weld it together for a hundred dollars," and it, it's been fine for like several months. <laughs> and then another time, the gas pedal, like you couldn't press it. What? And I was driving when I discovered, yeah, just because of the mechanism inside. It's actually under the hood because the dude showed me, like it just fell apart, just rusted out, broke, so you replaced it, replaced the pieces. And then for the longest time, the passenger side door, you cannot open the door. It does not open. <laughs> so you just can't open the door. It's a security feature. <laughs> that they just come out with. It's impossible to break in. So during the Bob Cyclone weeks, I uh, get up for work one day. It's uh, maybe like 7.30 in the morning. And uh, go to open the door, and the door's just frozen. And I can see there's actually ice around the whole door. Uh, it's that's completely frozen and closed. So I'm like, right, this has happened in the past. So I, what I do is I just kind of run inside, grab like some hot water, just kind of pour uh, it along the edges of the door. So I do this, pour it on the handle as well. And then I go, okay, it's going to be fine. I go to open the handle and the, the handle just kind of snaps off. Oh, it doesn't no. completely come off. It's like hanging. And the door opens. But the hinge is, like, completely busted, right? Ah. So I'm like, all right, well, uh, as long as I can get to work, I'll figure it out later. So I sit down, and then I realize that the door shuts, but it will not stay shut. Oh. And it will not lock. It won't do anything. So it's just like the door will, will go, come to a complete close, but you cannot, like, keep it closed. You just push it right open. So I decide to drive to work while this is going uh. on. And I have to hold the door. That is so unsafe. I have to I'm so glad it. you're okay. <laughs> I have to hold the door with my left hand uh, as I drive. That must have been scary. That's pretty crazy. And basically, there's a mechanism in the car where if your door is open, it makes a, a beeping noise while you're driving. <laughs> it's just going, it's just going like ballistic, and I have no, I have no way of, contr- of stopping this. <laughs> and there's like a flashing light too, and there's a terrible, a terrible noise, man. It's insane. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just I'm just picturing you in the car, like holding a show with your left hand. Your other hand wants to cover your ears, but you can't. No, it's just There's a nightmare. This horrible noise, and then this light flashing at you the entire time. It's just a nightmare situation, and it was okay. But like when you make a right turn, it's really hard. it was like really difficult because it's supposed to swing open. Dude, that's super unsafe. Oh my god! Well, I have a belt on. <laughs> sure, sure. That's what they said about the land speeders in Star Wars: Return of the Jedi. So I got to work. I said, I said, I'd like leave the door as it is, and like someone could just open it. I don't really have anything in there of importance anyway. And uh, so I like did my work day, and then I, I you know, I talked to my mechanic through, through text. Things were close. He's one of my angels, as we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's like, "All right, bring it to my uh, bring it to my shop." So I started kind of playing with the door before I leave. At this point, it's, this is like nighttime now. It's like maybe 7, 7.30. 
And this is the Bomb Cyclone, so it was very cold. It was like five degrees. Seriously. And uh, I start messing with the door. And I'm trying to see if I can just get it to like lock. Like if I, get, if I could shut it and then somehow get it to lock in place. Yeah. So I like open the door and I, I actually like physically move the locking thing on the door with my hand. And so the door is like locked, but the door's open. I don't know why I did it like this. I don't know why I did it like this. So then when I got to shut, and then I tried to shut the door, but now it wouldn't even go into a shut position <laughs> because the, because it, it thinks it's locked, but it's open. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you go to shut, it's like blocked, and there's like a good amount of airspace in between now. Even if I just hold the door, uh... so I'm like, all right, well, I got to get to this this guy's shop. So I just start driving. And I'm holding it. It's like a lot harder to hold it this time because it's like it won't actually shut now. The air is like getting in there, yeah. pushing it around. And I'm on the highway now. But what was, oh. what was interesting was like the highway, when you start going like 60, it actually like helps keep the door shut because it's like a vortex of air, I guess. A polar vortex? <laughs> a polar vortex against the bomb cyclone. <laughs> so it actually like wasn't that hard to hold it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Probably if I slammed the brakes or something, it probably which I didn't have to, I didn't have to do luckily. Um, well, I'm glad. But there's like air coming through. I didn't have any gloves or anything. So on my left hand, oh. I realized I got like frostbite. Oh, <laughs> like real frostbite? Yeah. And so it was basically like a burn, which I think is what frostbite would look like. Is that right? I think. Maybe it's just like Our, a wind, maybe it's just like a wind burn or something. I don't know. But yeah, it, let's go. Let's hope it's a wind burn. I'm That's okay now, but I like basically got like so my hand got like so cold in one spot. So I was able to get to the guy shop and everything, strapped it off, and uh, but then I was like my hand was like really screwed up, and it was like super numb. It was like the skin was like burned, and like Ugh. like cut in a way, and it was uh, it was gross. And uh, people people would ask me the next couple of weeks like well, what's going on with your hand. And I would tell Did them you go the see Dr. Senator? Tell them about my angels and, you know, all that. <laughs> yeah, so I showed up at the, at the doctor, Senator Doctor's home. He goes, you obviously <laughs> did not read the email properly that I sent you. <laughs> um, Fix this. But that was my story with the Bob, the, the Bob Cyclo. Yeah, wow. You, you went through a much bigger adventure than I ended up in. Though you made me realize that my car is only three years, not as two years less old than yours. That's so true, like, yeah. so I'm gonna be like in the same boat really soon. Yeah, it's annoying. I'm gonna have to do it. I don't want to. Nah, but I'd rather you didn't fall out of a moving vehicle. Just, well, just it's saying. fun to have one of these, these, these cars. Well, this, this other guy I work with's got a crazy car. We like we compare stories and we try to um, tell stories to other people and decide who is the worst car. <laughs> it's very fun. It's like the it's a, like a one downsmanship contest. Oh yeah, <laughs> but if you have like a great car that works all the time, I mean, what do you what do you have stories do you have to tell? So I there's this there, one time I put I my key in the ignition, <laughs> yeah, and it started started perfectly. Should have heard it. That's yeah, amazing. it's not it's not interesting. Come on, man. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't think of myself as a negative person, but the negative stories are so are usually so much more entertaining. Oh yeah, it's great. Speaking of that. <laughs> How's your uh, health issues? <laughs> well, I'm currently in cyborg mode. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, make this like an intervention podcast right. going forward. Here. So AJ's I've got a heart for... monitor on right now. Yeah? For the next few days, I've been wearing it for over a week. And uh, just to see if my heart rate is normal enough that I no longer need to take medicine for it. I hope the answer is yes. You'll know when. Uh, in about three weeks. Okay. And then, <clears throat> um, because of the other issue with blood clots, I'm on the blood the the blood I'm on blood thinners now. Instead of three months, I'm on them for six months. Ugh. And when we're done, and I go off them, I have to take a blood test because. We have determined I have one bad clotting factor, which makes my blood clot funny. And 
because and they did I also tested positive for another one, but the medicine that I was taking at the time makes you test positive for that one. So they didn't when I'm off the, the time. Test, well, they just did the tests. Like we got to do these tests like now. They didn't think do the test before you take the medicine because I might have died. So is it the extreme? <laughs> I wish, man. I got the wrong Zika mutations up in here. <laughs> yeah. So I'll know in about probably seven months. Well, not seven months. Yeah, about July, June, July, whether I have to keep taking that medicine for the rest of my life. And let me tell you, that one is irritating. Why is that? Because I'm ba- basically it takes me longer to clot my blood than normal people right now. So you cannot do any boxing. No boxing. No Got to watch boxing. out for head trauma. Be careful about bleeding. They suggest that you shave with an electric razor instead Whoa. of a regular one. And yeah, uh, yeah and um, one that some people would say is a plus, I would say is depressing, is you you can't drink much at all. Okay. Why is this? So yeah, Why you're not supposed bleeding? to drink. No. Okay, well, if you get if you, it, I think it's because you could have, have stomach bleeding. Or yeah. something, or, your, or alcohol thins your blood too, and then it'll get too thin. Or you might get drunk and fall down. <laughs> That's another one, yeah. So I can understand that. Um, what was the sh- what was the movie about the hemophiliac? <laughs> you know what I'm talking I, about? The book, or, it was a book they made people read in like school. Is that the person who was afraid? Wait, that was a hemophobic. No, I don't know the book. Oh, wait, wait, yes, it you sounds familiar about. now. Yeah, like it was some kid's little brother or something. Yeah, there's like one of those weird books that make you read. And he like bled to death. Yeah, why did they make us read that book? I don't know. They love making us and read then, depressing books. Or the Brian song. This is off uh, topic. Red Badge read? of Courage. What's up with Brian song? Why does everyone have to read that? I don't know, man. It's a, a classic, I guess. Why, though? Because you need to make... The thing that really ticked me off is you give middle schoolers depressing books. Dude, middle schoolers can depress themselves just fine on their own. They don't need any help reading about dogs dying. <laughs> Thank you. There's some strange ones, strange books. Yeah. Okay, anyway. But um, yeah, I'm doing okay aside from that. Why don't you tell us about the sleep study that you had? Oh, Frell. Just a little bit. Uh, I want you to take up the entirety of the show like you did last month. Okay. Uh, where do we leave off? The sleep study that... <laughs> well, just kind of give us an idea. Last, yeah. Just give us an idea of like when you went to the hospital and like what happens. Okay. When you go so when you go to study. an in-hospital sleep study... Um, first of all, like I arrived, was supposed to get there at like nine or 10 o'clock, I think nine o'clock and, uh, I get there, they signed me in and said, okay, so I've got, uh, other people. Don't feel like you have to rush. Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, you get in there and they, they bring you to, it looks like a, like a one bedroom hotel room. Like it's just a big old king size bed and two end tables a butt face of electronics, a TV. Is it paintings? A hospital bathroom. Yes, paintings. Does it have like a weird chair that no one would ever use like a, like a hotel has? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. And I actually had, they actually had regular chairs too. You know how like, like a, you know what I'm saying though? Like a hotel's got a yeah. weird chair. Like every, yeah, that uncomfortable chair you'd never buy. Yeah, it's just there. You'd yeah, it takes up so either. much space. <laughs> Why is it there? Like, there's a bed right here. I'm going to use that, thank you. Sometimes they sit it up when you go in. It's like the chair's sit up with, like, a table, and there's, like, a notepad with a pen on it. Yeah. Like, they want you to, like, write, you're just take some notes. Hey, you never know, dude. You're just, you know, just get down there and... I appreciate those little notepads. I'm like, thank you. I have, now I can write down my amazing ideas. Yeah, I'd forget them. That's why... I... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So the guy says, okay, you can go change into whatever you're going to wear when you go to sleep in the bathroom, brush your teeth, whatever, and I'm going to come back in a bit. So uh, I go into the other room, and I get changed, I brush my teeth, I come back, and I end up just reading a book for like 30, 40 minutes. But he's able to see you. Yeah, there's well, in the bathroom, there's no camera, I hope. I would think not. Yeah, I changed in the there's bathroom. Not much to do with the sleep study. At least I hope I changed in the Most bathroom. Let's to see if I you're did. doing like cocaine or something in there. Make that would make it real away. easy to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Dude, do you're... I have apnea yet? But while you're reading, like, he could see you? How do, how do they Probably, see you? Is yeah. a camera? 
yeah, there's a camera. Do you see the camera? Uh, if you look at it, yeah, it's pretty obvious that's there. It's probably sitting there on the wall. It looks like a turret from a portal. Probably in the past did some sort of glass because they didn't have good camera technology. Oh gosh, maybe. Be funny if it well, like the guy has to monitor a bunch of people at once too. Do you think there's a recording of this? Probably, right? It definitely is. So this guy has this of you sleeping. Uh, he wouldn't be the only one. Well, who else has it? I don't know, but I will the find government? you. <laughs> Probably. Can we upload this? That's what I'm trying to ask. I, I don't have it. I could ask okay. for it. But, oh gosh, yeah. Uh, so is that strange, though, this idea of this man watching? No, what was strange What happened bef- was what happened before. All right, go ahead. I'm screwing it up. Go ahead. So I'm sitting there waiting. I'm just reading a book, and I'm actually getting tired now. I'm like, sweet, I could just go to sleep, but I can't because the guy's got to come back and wire me up. So he comes back in. He pulls over a regular chair. The chairs were relatively regular. He says, all right, I need you to sit there. This is going to take about 20 minutes, and I'm going to attach all the things. I'm like, okay. He's like, uh so what you're going to need to do first is I'm going to hand you this wire, okay? And you're going to take it through the neck of your shirt, down through your pants, and I'm going to attach it to your leg. I feel like you do it. Uh, no. How about you do so it? He, so he threads this wire, to, gives me this wire, and I thread it through all my clothes. And he's like, okay, now we have to do the other side. And he just starts attaching electrodes to me with this weird goop. Like, you see him scoop it out and put it on the things. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he does that all over my body. But he gets up to – working his way slowly up to my head. Again, like 20 minutes. And I'm just covered in wires. I'm like, how the frell am I supposed to move in this getup? And he goes to my face and uh, he puts – he starts putting goop like on my hair. Like uh, – and it puts it in my hair – on my uh, – cheeks my 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 under my chin my chest everything i'm like and he's like okay so you're just gonna sleep normally i'm like yeah i'm gonna sleep really normally like <laughs> this. Do this what does it smell like uh it was just some weird like chemical smell it wasn't terribly huh. strong but it doesn't was explain what it, it is just, I'm, he's like, I'm just gonna put this on you no explanation it's, i think it was supposed to be like glue conductive glue it's like an adhesive uh gelatin yeah, that conducts so you, electricity so they can, I yeah. guess, check on my did heart rate. you say, rate like, don't eat this or don't? Uh, he didn't have to, but funny story. I mean, well, it'd be like, make sure this doesn't get in your mouth or something, I would say. I could see. Oh, yeah, true. He didn't say that, though. <sighs> but, um... He's like, you will so not wake I'm, up from the sleep study. If this gets in your mouth, have a good night. Ooh, good night. Ooh. Goodbye. Just trust the door. Sleep well. <laughs> 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 would you like a snack? Because you're not getting one. But okay, dude. Like he, I, I'm attached to like a million electrodes. Like tw- it takes like 20 minutes to hook that all of them up. Like that took a while. And behind me, it's just there's a wire to each effing thing. So he has to like hold the bundle of wires and like while I walk over to the bed. Yeah. It's like all right, get in bed like normal. Um. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do so- a series of tests to get a baseline. I'm like okay. So he's. Well, I'm gonna go outside the room. Yeah, baseline. Like Blade Runner. He's like I'm baseline go. test. Oof. Yeah. Awesome. Avoid comp. Yeah. Well, that's the first he's one. Like, oh, okay. I'm in, my bad. I'm the 2049 version. Sorry. Go ahead. I'll catch up. So he goes outside. He's like, "All right, first we're gonna do a few things." And he's like, first off, can you hear me?" And his voice is coming out of a speaker. Like, yes, I can hear you. It's like, okay. <laughs> Now, what I want you to do is open your eyes and leave them open for as long as you can. What? Okay. And he's like, if so that gelatin go. gets in your eyes, we will be blinded. Good night. <laughs> Have a good night's sleep. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, and I'm just holding my eyes open. He's like, okay, good. Now blink for as long as you can. Like, okay. He's like, raise your left arm. Hold it up for as long as you can. Like, all this sort of stuff. He's like, turn your head to the left, turn your head to the right. Yeah. Hold your breath for as long as you can. So what happens, like, when you can't, you, when you just stop doing it? Yeah, and he's like, okay, good. But open your eyes for as long as you can? How- uh-huh, don't blink. Can't you do that for, like, a long time? 
he, after a while, he said, okay, good. He's like, oh, it's, it's more than we wanted, sure. Much more than we wanted. Please, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah, put please. them away. Put them away. Stop please it. Stop it. Now. <laughs> I can't look into his if eyes you, anymore. If you, if you don't blink, you'll have to go home. <laughs> the sleep study is over. Yeah. You will still and, build. Of course. And oh, don't remind me. Anyway. Um, yeah, right. So they do all these crazy things. And I, and I realize, you know, one of these things that he put on me is like, he put a little thing on my finger to measure my oxygen level. Mm-hmm. Don't ask how that's possible, but it's a thing. Oh, yeah. And he said, and I'm like, this thing is killing me. This is way too tight. I can't sleep. He's like, okay, good. Thanks. We're all set. I'm like, actually, can you come back and fix this thing on my finger? And this was after we did all the calibration. I don't think it, it he, he didn't seem worried. He's like, Ugh, fine. And he came back in. <sighs> And um, he adjusted it because it was super tight. And then he leaves. And then I scratch at my face because it was itchy. And I accidentally bump one of the things off my face. Oh. And he had said, if you need help, wave your arms in the air. So I'm just lying in the bed waving my arms like I'm crazy. Yeah. After a few minutes, the guy walks in. He says, hey, what's wrong? I'm like, I accidentally knocked this thing off my cheek like as soon as you left. He's like, oh, well, that's why we gave you a lot of them. So he puts it back on. I'm like, so if I knock another one off, should I call for you? He's like, no. It's like maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's so I'm just, job, right? Yeah, he's got to keep track of like five or six people. There were two guys, and what I think, think there's like five or there? six rooms. I don't know because he has to be there for like the whole thing. Yeah. Well, think about it though. Normal jobs are in eight-hour shifts, right? Sure. He's working a night shift while people are sleep, literally sleeping. Yeah. So what that amounts to is I got there at nine. I got to bed at 11 or maybe 1030. Like mm-hmm. I could actually try to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. He woke me up at like but six was, or seven, at like six. He was still there the next yeah. morning. Is that weird? He, a little bit. Oh, but, it's that guy. Well, here's why. Dude wakes me up at six o'clock. Uh-huh. So if he was there for – if he got there – if he got if he was there an hour before I got there and left an hour after me, he'd have an eight-hour work day. Yeah. But what that meant to nice. me was I got six effing hours of sleep. <laughs> I was livid. I'm He's like, go I'm exhausted. He's got to punch out. We can't give and him time at the hospital. We don't have the funds for that. Ugh. And I'm covered in goop, home. man. I'm covered in goop. Like it's all it's, – it's on my like clothes, my pajamas. Yeah. They used your body for their various means and – they just threw you on the street. Yeah, I had to drive it. myself home at like six in the morning. Like he's like, "Oh, you can stay here for a while if you need to." I'm like, "Can I go back to sleep?" No, I didn't ask that, but I was thinking it really hard. No, we must change the linens. <sighs> you have to clean so, yeah, this, just, the, the the weird chair that you did sit in. Yeah, you still it was an experience. Fingers. It was really weird. I actually have my results. Oh, like yeah? the uh, yeah, the doctor, one of the doc. Oh wait, they're like literally right behind my head aren't they yeah i'm impressed with you well they're like well they're like you don't have sleep apnea and i'm like well that's good then why in bob's name am i so zicking tired all the effing time like you were talking in your sleep and uh we now know your deepest darkest fears and your uh fantasies and your social (laughs) security number as well yeah though they did tell me like oh you know you grind your teeth i'm like yep whoa well you knew that Yep. How did you know? Dentist. How does he know? Because there's grind marks, or some of my teeth aren't as pointy. <laughs> so there's that. And Are that's you like all those the- mouth guards. I don't have to, but he he suggested it, and then he's like, insurance doesn't cover it, and I'm like, mm. that's weird. Grind your teeth and you're like sleeping. It only happens if I'm. Yeah, it yeah. usually only happens if I'm stressed out. Wow. Yeah, and it's not like anything stressful has been going on in my life. So, you can't could... do anything productive while you're sleeping. Uh, I think in the productive? future, well, you're you're moving your teeth. You're doing. I mean, can we like hook something up to your mouth? That <laughs> <laughs> like a generator. It's like, a like some sort of power that can. Yes. Wow, your it's jaw huge. would be so. Oh gosh, you're doing no, it anyway, I'm... though. Yeah, it's true. My jaw clicks sometimes too. I wonder if you can hear it. No, we don't want to hear that. <laughs> but me yeah, and, I, me and I, all the viewers would throw up if we heard that. Please don't do that. Ever uh, okay. Well, I hope you guys don't have to deal with this. It's not the worst thing. It's not too. Yeah. It's not great. It's not too bad. It's just, it's just weird. 
This is what I've learned from this show tonight. You and I are just terribly, uh, <laughs> we cannot function in the world. <laughs> no. A stupid car, your body's failing you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, We're gosh, just incredible dude. losers here. Oh, no, it gets better. Sure. Like, not not, not health-wise, but I know, well, well, actually, here's a funny thing I'm curious about. Like, every time I make a doctor's appointment, even if it's the same department, I'm seeing a different doctor. Is that normal? Um, like, I well, went to go see the here, blood doctor, yeah. and they scheduled my follow-up with a different blood doctor. Yeah, I mean, those days of having your, like, your like family doctor or your town doctor is, like, way over. Now it's just, like, okay. these big groups. It's, like, these corporate medical centers. Because, like, I got to explain like their, my stupidity yeah. to, like, multiple doctors in the same profession now. Yeah, because you're not, uh, you know, you're just a... <laughs> You're just a number, man. Just a chart. It's, it's like frustrating. Like, so I gotta tell. So I gotta tell sorry. another doctor. Like, okay, here's all the stuff I do. This is me. And then, it's four months, six, well, five months down the line, I gotta tell a different doctor the same stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can't expect them to remember it's everything really, about uh, you. But well, it's really hard for a doctor to have like a private practice now. It's almost like impossible. Yeah. Really. Um, so they have to be part yeah. of these like huge groups, medical groups. That um, explains just it. Just because insurance and stuff is so high. Gotcha. You can't do it. Um, which is funny because they uh, they don't want, you know, <laughs> they want us to have, like, government medical. We should ask Dr. Senator about this. Well, it's okay to have corporate, uh, you know, medical. It's fine. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I'm failing in another way, too. And a lot of times you don't have any other option, too. Like, in your whole, in, like, the whole area, there's, like, one huge building. Oh, All gosh, doctors, yeah. And you really have, don't have any other options anyway. <laughs> It's frustrating. Oh, yeah. But, I've been through it. Yeah. Well, here's the hoping, though. I got five more, five, four and a half, five months on this medicine, and hopefully another three weeks on the other medicine. So wish me luck, you guys. The coach is going to be okay. Yeah, I gained a butt face of weight, but I'm slowly losing it. <laughs> then you can gain it back. Yeah. I'm down two pounds from last week. Eat it. It's good. Yeah, or down a pound. For, well, I was down a pound la- yesterday. I'm down another pound today, so I don't know what, how that adds up. But yeah, go Team Venture. So um, I started a new job in the beginning of the month. And uh, it's a straight up office gig. Mm-hmm. Office jobs are uh, wacky, man. You know. Yep. Many yep. issues with printers all the time and the Wi-Fi and the printers. People are going on to the wrong Wi-Fi. The printer's on a different one. They repeat. They have to be told many times. Are you on the correct Wi-Fi? What is the password again? <laughs> to the Wi-Fi or the printer? Yes. It's just very... Yeah, this goes on all day. And then one printer... There's like three printers. One of them doesn't work. And then uh, the other one... Oh, no, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um... I get to use the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud stuff, which is which is cool. Pretty rocking, yeah. Which is kind of like a direct result of of uh, doing this this show and uh, other stuff, you know. Yeah, you know what you're doing. Getting to, yeah, so it's kind of a cool thing. Um, and the office is in a, a strip mall. Okay. Not, not in like a corporate building, which I like a lot. So um, in the past, I worked in an office in a in a building, mm-hmm. and around like a like the third floor in like the corner. In like a cubicle, <laughs> it's like you're in like a prison situation. I feel yeah. like that. Yeah. But now I'm like it's in like you know strip mall. Um, the office so there's like windows and there's actually like a lot of stuff going on outside because all these That's other cool. businesses and stuff. People like walking back and forth, and you see some crazy car situations, like people, two people trying to pull out of um, spots at the same time, <laughs> like next to each other, and then they <laughs> start yelling and. Uh. But one thing that's nice is a lot of uh, there's a lot of food options. Oh, that's gotta be cool. All over the place, and uh, the people there are like obsessed with food. They uh, this the whole day is built around the lunch. <laughs> what are you having? <laughs> they compare what they got. You know, um, sometimes they'll try to put together a thing where like everyone gets together and they they like argue about what to get. <sighs> um, but it's like a whole, it's a whole thing. This lunch, it's like the whole, it starts like as soon as you get there. The, what's what's the lunch today? What do we? <laughs> what do you have? <gasps> you gave me a great idea. Yes. For an application for people to pick lunch. Thank you. Oh. 
No, some places do that, actually. Nice. But, um, like, when our first day, this, you know, this guy's like, well, what are you having for lunch? There's a lot of great options here. So, <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, and, like, this guy told me, like, multiple people tell me, like, there's this deli, and it's, like, you know, down the, down the block. He's like, don't, he's like, you go anywhere you want. Like, everything's good. Just don't go to this deli. And, like, a few don't other people. Go. Yeah, there's a few other people who are like, don't go to that, that one specific place. Like, everything else is good. Just don't go to that one. You'll be fine. Hmm. So I decided to go to it. Of course you did. <laughs> As I go to this place, there's like this little deli. And uh, there's, like, no one in there. I don't see anyone at all. And I'm still looking at this menu. It's, like, it's like handwritten on, a like, a big piece of cardboard and just, like, kind of stuck on the wall. And it's like very like basic uh, descriptions of things. It's like salad, like. chicken. <laughs> it's like meat. There's no real description there. It's just like a very basic idea. Yeah. And um, and it seems like there's no one working there or anything. And I'm standing there, and I, all, all of a sudden I hear this voice. It's like, "What do you want? <laughs> what do you want?" Like that? Yeah. And there's like this old. I would say, like, Eastern European um, woman just in the Aww. corner that I didn't even, like, notice is there. She's, like, in the, <laughs> just standing there, quiet. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm just, I'm still uh, looking, you know. Um, you know, I'm still, I haven't decided. And uh, she's, like, just no patience at all. It's like, no, 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 I'll make you, I'll make you food, good food. I'll make you good food, $10. It's $10. <laughs> And I'm like, well, I'm like, huh? And then she starts, she's like, she starts like cutting things and like putting something together. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, and I start like, and I start like talking. To her. I'm like, well, I don't uh, want anything hot because I'm saving it for later on. So like, I don't want like a hot thing. And she just like doesn't say anything at all. <laughs> and just starts like putting something together. And then she comes back with like a bag of, of food and then she charges me $10, like she said. Okay. And I'm like, all right, okay. And I just give her, you know, 10 bucks. And, you know, I go back and pull out the bag. And uh, it's like a sandwich in there. And I have to say, it's probably like one of the best chicken cutlets I ever had was in there. Yeah. And it had like eggplant in there and uh, cheese oh, and wow. like sauce and was on like a wedge. And it was very good. Nice. It was just, you know, it was just a wacky situation. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so I've I've been going back there pretty much every week. That's cool. And it's always like the same routine. I go in there and she's like, she's like, I make you good food today. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And then uh, once in a while, she'll like yell something from the back. She's like, she's like, you uh, you like zucchinis? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, yeah. She's like, you like the peppers? I'm like, yup. And you don't even know what she's making. And then one day, one day she's like, <laughs> she was saying, she's, she's like, you like uh, the Asiago or something, something like that. Right? And I was like, I can't yeah. understand what she was saying. I'm like, excuse me. And she asked me again. I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't know. And then she like came out with like a like a block of Asiago cheese and like cut it for. She's like, you eat. She's like, eat this now. And I was like, I was like, yeah, it's good. She's like, all right. And then she, <laughs> so then that goes on the sandwich, right? And it's just eat like this, this wackiness. Now. Yeah, she's like, she's like, eat this now. And I was like, yeah, it's good. I like it. She's like, all right. And um, it's it's always like has a chicken cutlet involved in it. <laughs> like it's always the base thing. And then everything else on top is like different stuff, but it's yeah. always like pretty really good. Right? It's always like really awesome, and uh, it's kind of like interesting to me, not knowing exactly what you're getting. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I could see it's not a good business model because, like, especially with food, people can't eat like everything, you know. Yeah, and especially today's marketplace, everyone wants like customization. Like, mm-hmm. I know what's best for me, right? I want to customize my lunch but I mean it's fair yeah and then uh, one day I just like came back with like the, the bag and this dude's like he's like what'd you get for lunch and I just, I just look at him and I'm like I have no idea <laughs> and I just walked right by <laughs> dude if you started telling them they should go eat from the crazy lady I think they all tried it but they don't like the the idea that you can't that she just like takes over Ah, I don't know. I don't know the, what their interactions are, to be honest with you. But I just think she just has no patience for you to decide, <laughs> and she just wants to make what she wants you to have. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. <laughs> but 
But yeah, I just find it very entertaining. Yeah, and hey, you get a good sandwich every week. No, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we end up arguing about lunch at work sometimes too. We used to go in big like we used to go in a huge group and now there's uh-huh. just like usually two or three of us. It's weird. Because we all just kind of split off Uh-oh. into different groups. Like, clicks. It's weird. Monday through Thursday, we eat with the same people. Uh-huh. Friday, it's just two or three of us. Like Monday through Thursday, there's anywhere from seven to eight people that we eat with. Friday Is Friday like a dead day for you? Like are people just like exhausted? A little bit. I mean, we still work, but like oh, it, yeah, everyone's like, to. it's Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> It's like you just got to get through with the day. One more day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the office life is wacky. I think it's yeah, like really honestly, unhealthy. <laughs> it's incredibly unhealthy. Because you think about it like you are you go there, like you, you become exhausted, but you do no physical like movements. So I think that's just like really bad for you. It's very – I think it's just very unusual, like yeah. bad for, for a human being oh, yeah. to be mentally exhausted and physically okay. Physically done nothing whatsoever. It makes you feel exhausted. You're hungry. You want like re- nourishment or or reward when mm-hmm. you haven't done the physical activity that would make such a thing okay. Yeah. Like no, I think it's really it's, bad. <laughs> it's funny. I, I think I figured out one of the reasons I gained so much weight is because I feel like I want like I want a reward or something, and when I have my computer, I just go play F and Overwatch or something, and then I'm like, nope, I'm upstairs. Yeah. I'm not going back down where the food lives, and so I don't have a snack. Now my computer's busted, man. I'm downstairs where that's where all the fun stuff is. It's a vicious cycle. Yeah, man, makes it worse. And you sit in an office job, you're not moving. Honestly, yeah. My doctor told me you got to keep moving, like. Yeah. It's bad for you to stay still like for too long. You go on a long flight. If you're off the blood thinners, I recommend you take them just for the flight. Yeah. Like so you don't get an embolism or something. Huh. Like sitting stationary is bad. I mean, which is why a lot of companies are doing some better stuff. Like they don't care if you get up and walk around. Well, some people have those desks where you stand. Yeah, standing desks. They've got but, nice ones where I work. They're pretty oh, no, Some people have them, yeah. I don't have that. But, yeah, uh, they've got uh, they've got the same dock you have at your desk. So right. two big monitors. Yeah. Only thing about that is you're using a shared keyboard and mouse. Yeah. So like, who knows if that guy who came to work when he shouldn't have was sitting there, standing up there, going, blah, 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 blah. Everyone's sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Complain about how cold it is. Yeah. So we, um, we touched on this last month a little bit, the Fox Disney deal. Like, we weren't able to get into it. I want to jump into this. All right, what you got? Do you know the, some of the details? I have all the details here, so if you don't know. Now you know. So it was basically the announced price was Disney buying Fox. $52.4 billion in stock, along with $20 billion in debt, and $6.3 billion in cash. That gets you to $66.1 billion in enterprise value, which is stock plus debt minus cash. I would like to point something out. Yes. These numbers are stupidly huge. Yeah, it's crazy. Please continue. Have you ever heard that enterprise value? No, and what's this debt? So what, like Fox owes Disney money or Disney owns Fox money? Uh, They took their debt. I I don't know. (laughs) Oh, they took on Fox's debt. I think so, yeah. Okay. Do you think you'll ever... um, Purchase something with an enterprise value to it. Nope. <laughs> Unless it is the Starship Enterprise. Yeah, this is crazy stuff, man. Man, did you tell that those numbers are someone in the past? Like someone It'd from be like 1994. Do- dude. What would yeah, think? dude. That would blow their mind. Like, wow, that's a lot of money. Like, like Marvel's yeah. still around? Very good. What's What's that? Oh, 93. No, Marvel was big. Never mind. Oh, yeah. They were doing pretty decent. Yeah. A few years later, they were doing pretty bad. Um, A notable plus of such the purchase. That's a weird sentence. A notable plus of such the purchase. That's. I cannot question this whole article because maybe. (laughs) This is a Russian Russian article. I'm not reading, apparently. Uh, Duh. 
Um, a plus of this is Disney being able to obtain the film rights to X-Men and Fantastic Four. The distribution rights to Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, which Disney did not obtain through its respective acquisitions of Marvel and Lucasfilm. And James Cameron's Avatar film, which Disney World's Pandora, the world of Avatar area at Animal Kingdom is based on. Ugh, garbage. So why did they build this thing? I, I think they knew this was going down. Because they already built this park. I mean, they had Star Wars stuff before they had Star Wars. Oh, uh, it's all conspiracy. I mean, considering Marvel's at Universal Zickin Studios, man. Yeah, so this, this part I like a lot, right? Listen to this. In addition, Disney would own Fox's distribution rights to DreamWorks Animation's 2013 through 2017 film library, which they could potentially use to trade for Universal Studios' right of first refusal to distribute any future Hulk films produced by Marvel Studios, and even Universal's theme park rights to specific Marvel characters at Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios Japan. As Universal and DreamWorks Animation are sister studios. Wow, did you get all that? So they're ba- the guy, the, the the author of the article is basically theorizing that Disney could <laughs> trade these things to Universal Studios for the rights to the characters they own. Yeah, because basically Universal has some of their stuff. But they now have, they, they own, have Hulk movies. They have first uh, right of first refusal on Hulk movies. Whatever that is, I guess they could be like, "No, you cannot do it." You well, are you going to make it. one? No. Yeah. So basically, um, DreamWorks is the sister studio of Universal. Now Disney is obtaining them, so they could basically be like, "Listen, we have your sister. Do you want her back? <laughs> <laughs> you give us what we want." Oh, that's horrible. That's pretty. That's pretty crazy, right? That's really strong, crazy. Strong move right there. Dude, I feel bad. Dude, this is scary, dude. Like, the only, like, well, theme park-wise, the only one that comes close to Disney is, like, Universal. And movie-wise, Universal's pretty big, but Disney's a giant behemoth. Dude, this is how you get a monopoly where Mickey Mouse owns everyone. We have your Or as Gary Oldman here. would put it, Everyone! <sighs> So the deal is currently under review by the United States Department of Justice Antitrust Division. Who runs that? Scaramucci or something like that. I don't know. Which has already sued to block a merger between AT&T and Time Warner. This operation would, would be studied for 12 to 18 months. So 12 to 18 months they have to study this for. Studying. What do, you, what do they do? They use the, the notepad in the hotel. With the chair. What Clearly. Stu- what do they study? <laughs> that has to be studied. Um... It has already led to a significant significant amount of antitrust concerns. The deal is a horizontal merger in which a company buys up a corporation that produces the same goods and products. As opposed to a vertical merger, two companies that operate at separate stages of the production process for a specific finished project. Like the integrations of AT&T, Time Warner, and Comcast, NBC, Universal. <laughs> which, is two, which is two like combined things combining. AT&T, yeah. Time Warner, and Comcast, NBC, those are two different things. Two things. Uh, and they're all, and AT&T and, they're and Comcast are all terrible. And they're all combined. As such, horizontal mergers are more scrutinized and investigated than vertical mergers. As they should be. As they affect a more tangible reduction in competition. The Federal Trade Commission states on its own website that the greatest antitrust concern arises when proposed mergers between two direct competitors take place. There you go. Unlike, That's you know what? Um, no, I'll go. But un- <laughs> unlike most studios, Disney has a reputation for lofty terms and strict conditions being imposed upon theater owners on its films, such as Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Disney demanded a sixty-five percent cut of the movie's domestic ticket sales, rather than the usual fifty-five percent cut, along with a four-week hold in each venue and a face. A 5% penalty to any theater owner who breaks any part of the contract, including taking the film off screens. If the Disney Fox deal happened in 2016, Disney's domestic box office in 2017 would have equaled $4.5 billion or 40% market share, a figure no major studio has ever hit. For many, the deal would give Disney stupidly huge. the unprecedented market power to be abusive 
without end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're getting the X-Men, so I mean, it's all right. Yeah, it's all good, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as much as I want a good X-Men movie, this isn't worth it. You don't think so, though? It's not worth it, dude. I mean, it's stupid that all this stuff is separate, mm-hmm. but like... If Disney's got that much market share, that's really wrong. If any one company's got that, and it's not mine. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if it gets approved. Um, it's exciting though for the uh, the MCU. Very interesting to me. Yeah, if it happens, they can usually they can get pop. another twenty years out of it with the you know injection of the the X Men. Fantastic Four as well. Like they could reboot the X Men, like they did with Spider Man. Oh yeah. And you, know, you start the X Men. I would start young. You do the just do, don't even bring Wolverine in yet. You, wait, you save him till later. Yeah. You do, do the, the old the, do, do the five originals mm-hmm. and do them young like the uh, the Tom Holland style, the Spider Man style. They did keep them like yeah. teenagers, and you kind of you get ready for you know you get ready for ten movies with these people. <laughs> you know because they're gonna grow. Like yeah, dude, dude, this is gonna it, you could make the Harry Potter X Men exactly. movie where you just oh, watch yeah. them go. You block it out. You know you plan out ten movies. Boom. Let's go. Yeah, and then when they start getting too old, you bust <clears throat> out the new. Oh, they're already busting out the new mutants. Never mind. <laughs> well, that's that's another thing because that's that's Fox making that, and now there's already stuff happening where that's been delayed now. And are some of these other things even come out, or are they already starting to? Um, oh, know, mess with if, things. If they, if they touch Deadpool, I will throw bricks. I don't think they would, because that is a cash cow. Another thing I've kind of thought about. Um, all the top villains they never had access to. You think about the top Marvel villains, what comes to mind? Doctor Doom. Mm-hmm. They never had access to him before. Magneto. Maggie. Ma- <laughs> Sinister. And uh, Galactus. Have- Ooh, Galactus. The supreme being Galactus. So I mean, if he's they, supreme. Why is he punished to eat planets? They did not. They didn't. They just eat. Just is he punished to eat planets? They just that's just what he does. Oh, I thought he was punished to eat planets. Are you punished to eat? Are you punished to eat steaks? Oh, well, granola you've bars? Seen my heart. Well, mm, do you see granola bars? Yeah. You don't eat that? I do. I had one today. <laughs> so, I mean, it's definitely interesting. It's, it's amazing to think what they've done with just, um, really without their top things. Their top toys, man. They got Spider Man so back recently. They built new toys. Well, even, they if they didn't have them, even if they didn't have Spider Man, they'd, they'd still be fine, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, they made new toys. I mean,. We, they took other characters that people liked that they still had and then made them popular. They made the improved on these characters though. Like we were way into comics in like high school age. We would talk about Batman. We talk about X Men. Mm-hmm. Did we ever have a conversation about Captain America? Even not once. A, Iron not Man. A, no. No. But they they brought them like they brought them to that level. I think if I ever if talked not, about Iron Man, higher. it was like context of Marvel versus Capcom. Proton Cannon. Thor. You a beam. You ever have a conversation about Thor? Thor? Nope. nope. So they've, they've been able to do amazing things. Yeah, they, they they built those characters up, and it's a shame they couldn't build up the Old Faithful. Who? The Old Faithful, like the old stalwarts, whatever. Like who? The X Men and oh they, yeah they didn't have them, they didn't have them. yeah of course they didn't have them they they okay. sold them to get money to live I thought you were taking a shot at DC right there that's what no <laughs> poor DC don't don't kick the pup <laughs> it's like kicking um, old Yeller dude we've talked many times on this program about the Fantastic Four I feel it could be an incredible property to utilize properly utilize the property properly you know. Um, definitely. I don't know. What do you? How do you bring him in? What do you do? You know, into the Marvel U. I think it's good timing. I think it's. I think you might see with the uh, Infinity War stuff. I think you might see the elimination of some characters, perhaps. Yeah, like ones who are getting older. And it's, it's very interesting because in the comics, like the characters never die, and they just you keep going forever at and roughly the same age. But uh, <laughs> yeah. But obviously, in the movies, like there's real people playing them. They they can't. They maybe don't want to do it forever. They can't. The limitations of humanity. Swap them um, out. It worked for Batman. You just come with the younger guy playing the same character. <laughs> oh, except you can't have a different guy play. Imagine there's a different guy playing Iron Man. How would you feel about that? Oh gosh, 
Um, that would be really weird. But in this MCU, you might, you might see like actual endings to characters that you that you'd have enjoyed. Wow, that'd be the only time you like ever see it. And the introduction of new, yeah, it's very interesting. <sighs> wow, I'm trying to remember. What's the name of the guy? The the guy who plays Iron Man, something something Junior, something something. Robert Downey Jr. Thank you. Oh, that was driving me nuts. Come Lord. Yes. What do you have to say? Gosh, no. Like, it's interesting thinking about the that, that as a concept. Like, in the comics, you're never going to see endings for these characters, even until it's the year. Like, well, think you about do, it. Then they come back. <laughs> I heard like they're bringing Gene back. back again. Yeah. Which just irritates me. Just let it go. But, like, the thing that's really going to bug me, though, is, you know what's going to be hilarious, dude? In the year 2099, uh-huh. like, what are they going to do about t- Spider-Man 2099? <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be around anyway. Um, how long do you think they could, could – this, this, this MCU that began in 2008 with Iron Man, how long can it go for? Can they get 50 years? 50? Of, that's a hard. lot, dude. I was thinking, like, 10. I think another 10 easily. I think they go twenty. I think twenty you could do. Twenty years. They're gonna. You don't like, have to do. You don't have to do X Men. Right. You could. You could wait like five years because you got enough to do. I mean, the X Men right there. That X Men could be ten movies. Like I said, that could be twenty years. <laughs> you just have to grab a group of actors, young, and just be like, "Hey, remember those Harry Potter kids? Your turn." I think X Men's ten movies oh, easy. Gosh, John, can you imagine? If they did a real legitimate like X Men theme park where you go into the mansion, oh god, and you go into the danger room there. and you test what it's like to have mutant powers and whatnot, like you go into yeah, a room would, and you're like, I would live there my entire life. Gosh. You do X Men just... Ten, you know what the title is? What X Men X X Men X? Oh, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> but I will tell you this: this is just making me feel really sad for the Hall of Justice at. Uh, uh, Six Flags, New England. <laughs> well, they don't care. You already paid your money. <laughs> the Flash um, was there. He was really cool. So I was thinking, well, like, we, what you could do with the Fantastic Four, and like I was thinking, um, for like Reed Richards, I would kind of like uh, do so. You kind of mirror what's happened to the character, like what's happened to the char- like the character himself in reality, right? Explain. He's he's kind of like a forgotten about. He's almost like a joke. People laugh. At the oh, like I'm a scientist. Yeah, people almost like people like almost laugh. Like I, I've worn Fantastic Four shirts, and people would be like, scoff at me. They don't even know who I How am. Dare they? Just... <laughs> Some of them even went, "Oh, you like the Freedom Foundation?" No, people just base it on like the Jessica Alba movie or something. I don't know. Oh, sad. But uh, this is because you have like Stark and Banner and these other guys who are like, you know, lauded as, uh, as gods, basically like heroes. So yeah. you have Reed, it'd be this character who's like, uh, yeah, no people can, he's like a joke. He has no powers, nothing interesting about him, right? He's just a, he's just a lab geek. He's really good at what he's doing. He's brilliant, but he's not, he's not powers like these people. He's not famous like these guys. So he's kind of uh, overlooked, which is what's happened yeah. to the character. You know, see where I'm going with this? Yeah. And he's kind of like, yeah, he's kind of like a broken, a broke guy. He's a, um, I mean, what you can do is he like pushes too hard on some experiment. This is his last chance, and that causes the accident, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then suddenly he's one of these people with powers now that that he maybe he disliked the people with powers. He hated them. <laughs> now he's one of them, right? What yeah, but do? you don't want people to think that they need powers to be special, though. Or what I would do is, um, yeah. So what I would do is like. There's some situation in an Infinity War type movie, something like that, where like all the mm-hmm. people with powers are trying to solve a problem. But this guy, Reed Richards, who says there's nothing extraordinary about him. He's just a normal guy. He's able to figure out and solve the problem. But in doing so, afflicts himself and his family with these abilities. But he so what really I would... want. What do you yeah. think about that? I mean, what I would say is I think it would be cooler <clears throat> is if they've got all – if you know, he, he's – maybe he's even become famous, but he's kind of failing with the powers because he's – like and once he got the powers, like he's using them for everything. Like he solves all the problems. Like when, you, when you've when you got a hammer nail, he solves all his problems with the powers. Yeah. Then he realizes like at the end, he, he's there's some big crisis that 
neither, neither he nor any of the other power people can solve until he solves it with science. Like, like without using his powers, he just sciences stuff together. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's good. There's so many options. Uh, one of my favorite storylines is, uh, the coming of Galactus. Yeah. Which is basically the silver surfer is like the herald of Galactus. He flies around trying to, um, find planets that are suitable for Galactus to eat. That's how he sustains himself. Eats planets. Um, so nom, nom, nom. one day, another you know, Fantastic Four, the Baxter Billion, they wake up, eating breakfast. Notice the sky's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> People are going crazy outside, and they Johnny, what did you do? Yeah, I think they do. Bl- I think they do blame. Yeah, they do blame him. The people, um, they go out into the streets, and uh, people are like going crazy, and then they're like, "The Human Torch did it." And they start throwing like rocks at him and stuff. <laughs> no, seriously, that happens. And uh, it turns out that it's the Watcher, and he's like, "Hey, um, I'm not supposed to interfere, but I know what's going to happen. Like the, the Silver Surfer's coming, so I, I covered your planet in fire, so he would just pass by. But the Silver Surfer, he was not tricked so easily. He f- comes right through that flame, and he finds the perfect appetizer meal, or you want to call it, for Galactus." <laughs> And uh, he calls Galactus is coming. And uh, in the meantime, Silver Surfer's hanging out. And he uh, meets a blind woman. Yep. <laughs> and she, like, doesn't realize he's, like, a weird-looking silver guy. And she, like, makes him food. And he's like, you, he's, like, you put this in your body? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> this chicken cutlet? What is this? <laughs> and he decides, like, no, like, Earth is worth saving. And then he, you know... um, yeah, it turns on Galactus and uh, so on and so forth. Galactus decides to take off, but he like curses the surfer. He makes him steal. He can't leave Earth now. He's stuck on Earth. Like I think he can fly around yeah. a little bit in space, right? But he can't really leave Earth far. Well, eventually he's able to break that. That was oh. the original story, though. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's just really awesome stuff, man. Yeah, it was. It was a great. It was a great uh, run. Oh, yeah. Some Stanley Kirby stuff. So we'll see what they do. Yeah, I mean, well, if it all the, goes through, they've of got justice. 18 months, don't they? 12 to 18 months. As much as I hate to say it, like, I don't think it should go through, but... If it doesn't go through, maybe they'll come back and just be like, well, we'll just buy certain things. Can we just cherry pick some things? Yeah... Well, might, I don't know if they would do that because Fox, because but... Fox without X Men and Deadpool and stuff's going to hurt. They wouldn't be able to continue, probably, right? No, they'd just die, and then Disney would pick up the ashes anyway. So that's the weird thing about this: is like you're not allowed to, to buy them. What if they just decide to like go out of business? That's okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> would they be like you know you cannot, all... you cannot close this because then Disney would be too strong? <laughs> then all the other right, then all the other companies buy all the other rights, and then Disney buys all the other rights, and oh my yeah. gosh, it's the same thing. So I was talking to you. Uh, I don't, you probably don't remember this. Like, with it, like two months ago, we we're talking about Deadpool. Mm-hmm. What they should do with Deadpool? Yeah. And our ideas, we used, like when they do a Deadpool movie, I would keep like Ryan Reynolds and everything, keep the whole thing, and just make it kind of like this guy who like w- like walks between worlds, kind of thing. Like where he doesn't really he doesn't really have to be connected <coughs> to the universe, but he could be in the universe, you know, for comedy purposes and stuff. Yeah. He's got kind of his own universe in a way. The um, pool verse, but. We come up with this idea where uh, it starts. <laughs> this is the Disney Deadpool, right? The double D. So it starts off at a um, a Disney World where they have like these character breakfasts. <laughs> yep. So you have like what is it? it's like a breakfast, but like the characters there are like goofy. There's people in costumes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So our idea was that um, they start off with that, and it's like Deadpool's one of the characters, but it's actually him. <laughs> and he's like serving the kids, and they're like you know throwing food at him and stuff. I thought that was pretty cute. Yeah, that would be all awesome. Dude, that would be so cool. You have like Minnie Mouse and shit, and there's like Deadpool is there. <laughs> Shoving uh, food into the mask. Yeah. Uh, so some of the other stuff they'll get is Planet of the Apes, Avatar. We talked about that. Alien they're going to have. Um, some Marvel stuff, as we talked about. But I kind of went through the IPs that Fox owns, and I come up with mm-hmm. some strange ones. <laughs> that the Disney will now have at their disposal. Okay, OJ? Okay. What you got? Revenge of the Nerds is now Oh, Disney. no. 
No, they can't make a new one of those. A fun 80s movie. Oh, Home man. Alone. Now Disney. Home Alone. <sighs> what do you think about that? They're going to build Kevin McAllister's house and people are going to get hurt. <laughs> and you could, yeah, you could attack old people. Older people like us can go in there and get beaten on by kids. <sighs> Die Hard. Disney. Oh, no. The newest Disney princess, Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> Welcome to Disney. What? Edward Scissorhands is now Disney. He, does, he, that makes him a princess? It could be, yeah. Well, it doesn't um, matter. Johnny another, Depp's been hanging out there for a while. Another Joe Pesci movie, My Cousin Vinny. Now Disney. They could bring that back. Put that in Epcot, yo. Mrs. Doubtfire, Disney. That's creepy. Office Space. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a great movie. That's, that's torture, though. Like, you, like, you wake up, you're... Song. You're supposed to be at Disney World, and you're at, in, a, in a cubicle. Disney knows how to like market things. They'll start selling those freaking uh, staplers, you know. Oh, they, those, those came back because of the movie. Oh yeah, of course. Dude, where's my car? Disney. <sighs> and uh, they'll have those guys in the parking lot. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Nope. No Disney. Nope. 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 <laughs> so, we'll see what goes down, man. We have no control over these things. It's, uh, no, we're we're just voters. That's right. That's correct. <laughs> um, the other day I watched. Uh, I got this thing, uh, Movies Anywhere. It's like an app. Okay. And basically, what, what it does is it takes all of your digital movies. It's like digital movies before were all kind of. Um, each studio had like their own things, like Voodoo. Then there's like the Ultraviolet, right? So you have like. Five different websites that have like your movies kind of spread out if you buy digital movies. So this movies anywhere thing came out and it combines them all. Basically you can like you can like import um all of your different websites that you use or all your different apps into this one app. Oh, that's cool. So when you sign up and if you link like two accounts, like 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 I mentioned, like a Voodoo and like a iTunes or something like that, you'll get like a free movie for like each one that you link. Sweet. So one of the movies I got for free was the uh, the new Ghostbusters, the oh, female Ghostbusters. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, so I own it. I didn't watch it yet. But um, okay, one of them I got was Ice Age. This is the okay, weirdest. The first movie. one was was okay. It was like this. It was like the first Jason Bourne movie. I got that one, Ghostbusters. That was okay too. And Ice Age. <laughs> Ice Age was okay. And I was watching Ice Age. It's from like 2002, and I remember it being pretty good. But it just looked like hideous. Oh, the CG to what, has an age for Compared well to what we do today. And, uh, yeah, I was kind of like, what is this? What's happening here? Yeah, it does not age well. And you can watch, like, um, Aladdin and, and like, those uh, hand drawn movies, and they look great. Yeah, but oh, the man, scene, it's I, like, like, yeah. It's like comparing, like, what, playing it, trying to play a PlayStation 1 game mm-hmm. versus playing a Super Nintendo game. Yeah, the Super Nintendo, like, like kind of ages better. Watch much, much, much better. So I was kind of like thinking about, <laughs> I was kind of thinking about this, like reading about some stuff. And uh, some with Toy Story, remember Toy Story? That was even before Ice Age. Yeah. And they made it toys, like talking toys, because they could make like plasticky looking 3D images. Yeah. And they rarely ever showed people because they were <laughs> like abominations. <laughs> <laughs> Like, the, if they were to do people at that time, they would have looked, like, really disgusting. So, they're like, let's just make it, like, plastic things that talk. Because this is, you can't show. And they, they never show the mom and, like, certain things. And, like, they try to keep it, you know, the humans yeah, out of it as much sense. as possible. Yeah, instead it ended up being, like, kind of a cool part of the movie. But it was really just, it's like the fog in Silent Hill. Like, we did this to get around a technical problem. <laughs> okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you have any th- further thoughts on Star Wars: The Last Jedi? I could complain about that movie for days. <laughs> I've, I will say, my, I've, tried to, I've come to terms with a lot of things in it. Okay, there's a couple things that I've thought about that I'd like to get your opinion on. 
Kylo Ren is better than Rey as a character, and Adam Driver's cool. Go on. Well, why? I mean, <laughs> okay. As long as you like one of the characters, isn't that the point? Well, yeah. You have to like just, all the characters. Well, no. What's frustrating is like, at the very least, Kylo has more of a story going on. He's he he's got more. Like, there's it's most still people I talk to like, like him as the they like him the most. Yeah, which is fine. Ray is know. perfect. She's perfect. None of the other she characters so are really cool. interesting to me. She doesn't Poe. do anything wrong. You Poe? Like Poe? He's kind of like a poor man's Han Solo in that he's really yeah. smart. He's he's like he he's witty and kind of a rebel. He, like he does it made what he him wants. kind of look. It made him kind of look dumb in this movie. Well, by the end of it, but yeah. everyone was kind of dumb in this so, movie. Right, everyone so let me, made let me throw a couple things at you, a couple observations. Sure. Here. So this whole saga, this new saga, right? It's Ugh. kind of built off this moment when Luke approaches the young Ben Solo. Spoiler alert, guys. Go on. As he's asleep, and he's uh, compelled to turn his lightsaber on, but then he goes to turn it off, but Ben already saw him. <sighs> so stupid. So he stands over him while he's asleep. So the whole thing is based off this moment. That's kind of set the whole thing in motion. Because he joins the First Order and they become more powerful. Now they're, they're, they're to get to the Rebels, blah, blah, blah. The Resistance, I'm sorry. <laughs> so there's a moment in this movie that is an amazing callback to that moment. But they never show it to us. But it does happen. Yes. Yes. It does happen, though. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So there's a scene where uh, a cool, a very awesome scene where uh, Kylo Ren and Ray fight all those dudes. Yeah, that that was right red, right around friends. before the movie went bad, and uh, they did kill all those guys. It was, it was awesome stuff. And then there's like a point where um, I think they're fighting over a lightsaber and it explodes. Yep, Kylo Ren's lightsaber explodes, and they both get blown back. Right. And then just kind of cuts to something else, probably a, a porg or something. <laughs> yeah. But during oh. this time, which happens all off camera, Ray wakes up before Kylo Ren. We know this because Kylo Ren's still asleep later in the movie. She's already gone, right? Yeah. So she wakes up, and he's unconscious. We know this. And she has a moment where she's alone with him while he's asleep, just like Luke did in that moment. And imagine you show that, right? And yeah, will it, she do it what Luke almost, did, or is she, or what? It, you know, that would have almost made the the stupid scene with Luke doing something he'd never do. That would have almost made it okay, because that would have made for a really powerful callback. Yeah, because this makes this makes Luke look worse because he had that opportunity and he <laughs> was he like, "I'm going to kill this kid." But she, knowing all the bad stuff that this guy did, knowing that he killed um, his old father, she has no problem just, I guess, just leaving. <sighs> she didn't even think about doing it. Luke thought about doing it when a kid didn't even do anything wrong yet. He just sensed something could happen. Like, seriously, like, they never... Ex- it frustrates me so much. It's it, the, the premise of show, don't tell is completely unknown to these people. They just tell us, oh, he's going to do bad. Yeah, so there's, that's, that's one thing that's like... Sorry, like, apparently I'm shouting too so loud. So if you think about it, that's really interesting. Like, if they showed that, it would have been, I think it would have been really strong. Mm. Um, then there's other weird stuff, like... <laughs> like, it's cool. There's a cool scene when uh, Hodo... What's her name? <laughs> Hodor? What's her name? General Hodor? <laughs> the chick from Jurassic that. Park. She self-sacrifices her with the purple hair, and she crashes her the yeah. ship into the other ship. Yeah, um, which is a cool moment. But actually, some theaters had to put a um, like a warning outside the theater saying, like, for ten seconds, there's no sound in the movie. That's like it's supposed to be that way. Did you hear about this? No. Yeah, because people were actually like jumping out of their seats. Cause you know what? Because when she does that, there's no they they put no sound in. Okay. Remember this? Vaguely. She self-sacrifices. She crashes the, the ship into the other ship. And the way they, the way they did it was really cool. There's like no sound. Mm-hmm. You just see it happening. So apparently in some theaters, people are like running out of their seats and running, you know, into the theater going, the, the, the movie's broken. 
there was no sound. <sighs> so they had to put, <laughs> some of the AMC theaters had to put like a notice, like like there's ten seconds of silence in this movie. It's supposed to be that way. Of course. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know. So you're like you're taking the hyper, you're kind of like weaponizing the the hyperspace, I guess, right? And the fact that they brought that up means that why don't you just always you do? You can't this? undo that. Yeah, you yeah. Just, and why now, don't you just always crash, just build giant things, just smash them into other things. You don't need missiles. So now man. you don't you need, just need the an engine anymore. and a brick. You don't need the ships. You don't need any of that shit. The lasers. Yeah. No, yeah, they're, kinda... they're, this is. This is going to ruin the universe. They're going to have to come up with a reason why you can't just do that. But anyway, where I was really going with this was like it's weird because she does like the self sacrifice thing. It's really like a cool moment, and then all the characters mm-hmm. react to that. Like she's a hero, and that's that's cool. So then, w- within ten minutes, there's a, <laughs> there's a scene. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> ten minutes later, there's a scene with Finn, where he's like, "I'm going to self sacrifice," and crash myself into this thing so they can't take this door out. And then the other chick stops him, and she's like, no, that's really wrong to do something like that. Basically. And she then she basically sa- almost sacrifices herself and him trying to stop him. Yeah. Well, she would rather, she would rather sacrifice, yeah, she would sacrifice herself to save him, which is what he was going to, do. I don't know. But it's, I mean, it's fine. I mean, it's fine to have that in there, but like coming right off of that other th- moment, and it's like, oh yeah, that purple haired chick, she was kinda she did the wrong thing. <laughs> she shouldn't have done that. <laughs> oh, there's like weird there's weird uh, moments in it. There's a lot of weird. And then there's a scene it. okay, there's a scene where Leia um so you show that Leia has like force powers, like she blows that door open. Yep. But then they get to that spot where there's rocks and she, they're all just like, Oh, what do we do? But she can't move the rocks. But Ray yeah, can move it's... the rocks. <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, honestly, dude, watching these mo- these two movies makes me want to watch the original trilogy and hope that there's way fewer inconsistencies, so I can just revile these new ones as much as I feel like I ought to. I don't know, because the sad thing is they're fun, great movies. It's but entertaining at the end of the day, but they're entertaining. Yeah, they're great in that regard, but they fail in a lot of other ways. Perhaps, mm. like the fact that my neighbor just bashed on the door because I think I'm talking too loudly. <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. You like what you had to say about the new Star Wars? I guess. I don't know. Maybe I was shouting. I don't know. I've been trying to talk quieter now. But yeah. I don't know if I'm more annoyed, okay. more embarrassed of the fact that I was too loud or more irritated that somebody just met, bashed on the door when they're the ones who play stupidly loud music that woke me up in the morning on weekends. Wow, now it's all coming out. Yeah. Have you had issues with the neighbors before? No, they're cool people. Aside from that, I just get mad when people tell me to shush. Did they say anything? They just banged on the door. They were just banging on the door when I was at my loudest, apparently. It's not <laughs> 10 o'clock yet. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I've, I've, I've heard them play loud TV. Sorry, it distracted me from so what would, Star Wars. Uh, what would you do the next movie to bring it back? Maybe some of the people that didn't like it. Um, to bring back the next movie, you'd have to say that it was a fe- that the previous movie was a fever dream. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I mean, there's so little you can do. To, there's nothing you can do to salvage the fact that basically everyone from the original trilogy failed at everything and are terrible. There's yeah. you, you have to accept that that they're awful and terrible and all the cool stuff they did in the original trilogy and the expanded universe never happened. Can't happen. And was worthless. So once you accept that, if you want to make the next one good, um, honestly, doesn't really matter too much. Just don't. You, you need to do something cool with Kylo Ren. By that I mean, he's. I'd much rather have him as a hero than the villain. Like making him into some big, crazy, big villain. Like making the villain someone you've seen a lot of instead of a little of. Because really, how much of Vader did you really, and Palpatine did you really get to see? Yeah, like you didn't really find out what was going on with them until the last movie at all. Right, you didn't know who Vader was; you just knew he was this terrible character. Now, I feel like they're trying to do the opposite with Kylo Ren, where you know his motivations, you know who he is, you know what he wants, and he wasn't necessarily the bad guy. 
but now they're going to make him the bad guy, and I think that's wrong. What they should have done, in my opinion, was a switcheroo where, where, well, the thing is, like I, I, I said this before, Kylo is, when he's not raging out like a crazy person, um, calm and collected when he fights, mm. and emotional at other times, while Rey is emotional while she fights and calm and collected to a degree at other times. I think it would have been great if Rey gave in to her feelings and went nuts or something, and then Kylo had to stop her from doing something so incredibly horrible. And you know what? You could still have this be under, like, you could still have Kylo be fighting for the First Order and her fighting for the Resistance, but she could just be trying to do something so terrible to help the Resistance that it's just bad for everybody. You know? I don't know. I just feel like you're wasting Kylo Ren by trying to make him more of a one-dimensional character. Like, oh, because if you just make him the bad guy, just straight up the bad guy, you've built some more. I've, you've built more sympathy for him in my mind than you've built for Ray, because Ray walks in being a talent, talented at, at getting scrap, skilled at fighting with a stick, force sensitive, very strong, and there's not that much growth for her. Oh, so she people just, are like, oh, there's going to be more to the story, and this one they're just like, no. No, no, she's she, amazing. She, she starts out awesome, and like, look at Luke in the original trilogy. He's terrible. He's getting zapped by the little training thing. Yoda's kicking his butt. He's bad. He loses his hand. He doesn't mm. know what he's doing. Like, he had to fight. He had to earn being good. And, I mean, I liked Rey in the first one. And she was a Mary Sue, but she was fun, and I feel like she just is too good. Like, I'd rather see someone who's bad turn good that someone who's good stay good. Like Kylo's done bad stuff, and he's been beaten a few times. But I'm rooting for him, man. So I think uh, I was thinking about what they could do to get all the people who didn't like it back uh, back in. I don't know if it necessarily be a good movie, but what you could do is I think you got to do something with Ray's parents. Is actually something else. They find out later on. It's something not what they gave you. Yeah, and then I would do something where so Snoke's got to Snoke's got to be alive. Yeah. Um. So one of the things I read, which I, I think would be interesting, is like he's actually like a, uh, it's like his body's not like. I guess he's kind of like a force ghost in a way, and he can go <laughs> into different bodies. So he possesses people, force sensitive or, people. Uh, maybe that maybe that body he was using was like his body, but he was already like, kind of looked dead in a way. Yeah, so it really. He's did. able to like, yeah, do something with the force because they're doing stuff with the force you never saw before. So they're kind of coming up with new things. Yeah, so maybe he's like some sort of force being that can like <laughs> body snatch people. It's kind of lame, but it could explain he's back, you know. And then I was thinking, you have all these force ghosts, right? Mm-hmm. And they never kind of show. Well, where are they? Right? Are they in like a the force somewhere? Is it like a realm or something? Well, they implied that they were learning that at the end of um, the, okay. like the first prequel so trilogy. So there's like this other kind of uh, force universe type thing, and like everyone's there. <laughs> so Luke <laughs> goes there now. So you got like Luke. You got you bring back Obi Wan. He and Christian comes back. You have Yoda <laughs> there. Uh, Sam Jackson's there. People would like this, I think. And they're all in this like there's like a big war going on with all these Jedi's. These force ghost guys <laughs> against these other uh, Sith type dudes. I don't know. Like, who cares about the physical world anymore? This well, is it's part. Of, it's part of what they're doing is like going to affect what's going to happen. Um, it's they're kind of you know they kind of play off each other the the real world and the the force world you know. But I think you would like that if you bring everyone back like that. It's all it's ultimate fan service, and then you just you're like, oh no, uh, Snoke's alive, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Ray's got some other shit going on, which we'll find out at the end. Yeah, it, I think it's that just they—they they ruined their chance with growth for her. I, I wanted to see her grow and get better. She just started awesome. I don't know. I didn't mind it as much in the first movie, but whatever. Let's see where it goes. Yeah. Is someone banging on the door again? No, I was me scratching my nose. Have you done your taxes yet? Nope, my computer with my tax return from last year is being repaired, so I have to oh. start from scratch. Oh, really? Yeah, or find where I printed it out. Oh, no, I have it on my email. I did but the, uh, the TurboTax deal. Yeah, that's what I usually do. 
I uh, almost made a, gr- a terrible error. It's a little scary with the turbo tax. I'm surprised they even allow this. Just like it's legal. Because people don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> they're playing with the government's money. I mean, really, I mean, it's it's very dangerous. People like me using this thing. Good point. And uh, so basically, for one of my jobs, I got like uh, two W twos, and I'm like, I looked at them like very quickly. I just like to get the taxes done, like, right away. Like, yeah. As soon as I get the W-2, like, I'm doing it that night. It usually doesn't take me that long. I want to get the money. So I just try to bang it out, like, very fast. So two W-2s. Two w- two w- I didn't really look at them, like, I looked, they looked exactly the same. They had the same uh, heading. Um, it was actually a digital thing. And they had the, the two file names were the same. My computer even like gave it like the number, you know what I'm saying? When you have like duplicate, yeah. One's like, all, so I was like, oh, it's the same, you know. So I put one of them in and do the whole thing, and then I go to file, and it comes up like, oh, you have to wait until uh, the 23rd or 24th to file. It's too early, something like that. So like prevented me from doing it. Mm-hmm. So I start looking, I start looking at the other one again. And I'm like, oh shit, there's like one line that's different. So I realized on TurboTax, you have, to, you have to like add a line. You can like add a line if you have, yeah. if you have um, two of the same thing. So I threw it in there. <laughs> I threw that in there and it increased my uh, refund to like nearly a grand. Wow. Like, near, like nearly an extra $1,000. That's insane. Because I, I almost botched this terribly. Well, and, I'm glad uh, you fixed and it. And I just waited until the, pr- the appropriate day. <laughs> and I was able to uh, do that. It's very stressful. Close call. I was just very happy with what I was getting already. I was like, that's fine. Let me just um, just finish this off. Glad you but did. I was too early to the party, you know? <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, so that, little that's, money that's... means to me. I'm just throwing it away. Just give it to the, the state needs it. The state needs it. Hey, you know, they got to fix some potholes. Exactly. Get more doctor senators. So uh, next show will be the 200th show. What can people expect for the 200th episode? <laughs> Perhaps a letter How? from Terrence P. Murphy and some talk about some sandwiches. You're going to make me hungry, dude. I had a piece of soda bread for dinner. Did you never eat tonight? I was at work and then I picked up the uh, computer and then I came home. You ever get really mad? Would you start cooking, singing loudly while you're? Oh, you've you've heard me cook before. <laughs> yes, OJ cooks in the nude. Not yet, he but sings now's a good time to start. Oper- operatic singing. I highly recommend cooking bacon in the nude. No, don't ever do that. It hurts. You've done this. No, but you splatter yourself with burning oil. Yeah, I imagine that, yeah, it hurts. Yeah, that happens to me anyway. I literally, <laughs> ever do it. Um, so yeah, I don't know what we're doing. We'll figure something out. Oh, well, we've got some ideas. It'll be lovely. Are you excited? <laughs> you can it's tell a milestone. Just wants to end this. No, I don't. She's I've got more stuff to talk about. Paranoid about. What do you have to talk about? We're wrapping up. It's over. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I went to go get a trim on Sunday. I didn't know you had stories to tell. Mm, I'm already yeah. previewing the next episode. It's all right. Well, yeah, I all went right, to get ahead. a trim on Sunday. And uh, I asked the guy to take off like one, maybe two inches, just trim it back a little bit. And my, my hair was like down to my shoulders and a little bit beyond. It yeah, is I like wanted you to keep it like that. Cause you were supposed to film something or I wanted your hair that way. So what did you do? It's, he took off like way too much. Oh. It's still goofy though. It is still goofy as frell. Who was this man that, that did the haircut? I think his name was, uh, it was <laughs> Jose. It was Jose. So what, well, I was asking like what type of establishment is it? Is it, it like just a super a, cuts or is it like a man? No, it was business? like a local, like a local hair business that had like a five star or four point five star rating. How did you find this? Google. Okay. And uh, like, it's my hair. Like I can tell that it, like it must be bad because nobody said, "Oh, you cut your hair." Oh no! And it's super obvious. I cut my hair. You like <laughs> like like I just wanted a job. I don't know. I don't. No one said anything, so I'm gonna have to assume so. 
but like i'm just like yeah take off a couple inches because the split ends are killing me like it is really bad like yeah yeah what does my it hands mean? Got, i never had that before what, what split is it? ends yeah basically like your hair kind of like the hairs will split and then you'll get little knots at the end of them oh. and so like if you're shampooing your hair or trying to run your fingers through it they'll just get stuck and you'll pull a lot out and it's it hurts and it takes forever and it's gross and it's everywhere it was getting really irritating yeah and like yeah so nobody said anything at all sure so <laughs> it's not like they didn't notice Did they they give str- <laughs> they give you strange looks oh. uh, i might have gotten it i think i got one strange look from somebody that i can definitely recognize oh man this is great but, yeah, so, I mean, I think this suits our purposes just fine. Oh, okay, so you tell them you're getting into character. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've learned tonight, folks. Life is terrible. We've got bomb cyclones. <laughs> On top of but that, what? we got to deal with hygiene and cutting hair. It doesn't work out half the time. Neighbors who you accidentally irritated. Neighbors who hate us. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have Star Wars movies that we complain about. Pay but don't worry. Don't, even... <laughs> don't worry. It'll all get better. We will fix all of these problems so. with show 200. We do taxes. This is terrible. This is no, a terrible we're program. Fix everything with show 200. The show everything 200 has to be... fix the tra- trajectory of not only our lives, but of the universe. So. Yeah. No No pressure. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing with that. I have no idea, actually, to be honest with you. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll have something great. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true, Josh. <laughs> well, to be fair, I consider great us just talking, so. Yeah, we'll enjoy. I know you and I will enjoy whatever we do. I don't know if anyone else will. Um, well, if I'm having a good time, then everything's already perfect. As long as you're happy, I guess I'm happy. You know, it's... <laughs> there you go, guys. That wasn't that simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was about to go into a whole thing about, wow, we've been doing this a lot. We'll save that for next time, though. Because that's the whole oh, point okay. of it, I guess, right? I guess, yeah. It's a big milestone, dude. Yeah, we'll figure something out, and uh, we'll get that done for you, friends. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's program. I, I thought know it was fun. I, did. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I had a good time. I kind of like this. It's like more laid back and just kind of talking. More laid back, dude. That's all I can I really was, do at this point. Dude, laid back. I was literally lying down. We used to get really crazy with this thing. But uh, it's a different time in my life. <laughs> like, Honestly, <laughs> sometimes I wish we could just record the phone conversations we have, because those are awesome. It's a lot more cursing. No, we don't really. Well, at least on my part. We don't really do that. <laughs> yeah, I like when we're um, trying to come up with ideas for things. It's usually pretty funny. Yeah, I know. You can't I record that because every time recording is happening, like you play up to it. It's like I don't know. It's just something kind of <laughs> mental. Like I'm a slightly, I, I talk slightly different than I do normally. Like I barely I'm, even put full words together. I'm <laughs> mostly just grunting and, and I just don't shut up. Yeah, usually you talk more to me um, in real life. <laughs> Like yeah, if we like go somewhere or something. Yeah, you can't I'm shut more me up. Quiet. Uh, I yeah. like to like soak to... everything in. <laughs> OG's OG's part of the action. Blah 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 blah. I need to cor- bring a recorder to shut me up. I'm in the corner, <laughs> observing. All right, very good. I got nothing else to say here. Okay. Good time. Uh, yeah, good deal. We just made it into January, I think. And uh, yeah, we got it. In February, so. All right. Thank you, friends. OJ, say goodbye to everyone. Thank you all. You've been listening to the show. This has been me saying thank you for Rambo Adoche. Dude, it's been the show. Have a great day. Okay. <laughs> you I say? heard the clip. I don't know. I don't know. This has been a production of StayBallsy.com, the best in free and optional entertainment. Have a pleasant evening, and remember, stay ballsy. Don't take any shit from anyone.